on Thursday, June 24, 2021, a 12-story condo near Miami suddenly collapsed. It left four dead and 154 missing at the time of this recording. My name is Romulo and I'm a civil structural engineer here in South Florida. In this video, I'll go over my perspective as a structural engineer on this historical disaster, as well as what's currently known about it. This building was built in 1981, and it's also very close to the water, which poses additional structural challenges. An article published by Florida International University shows that residences in Florida in the soil in coastal areas is settling by about one to three millimeters per year. And this is for residential areas. A 12-story building built near the ocean poses structural challenges because the sea level is rising, therefore the soil gets more wet and settles or it deflects downwards more. Now, this is likely not the cause for this collapse because there are hundreds of other structures in coastal areas in the US and in other countries that are subjected to some sort of settlement as well. And usually what happens is you see the building tilting a little bit or you, you see a lot of other signs of settlement of the soil giving in in certain areas or the entire building deflecting downwards. Going into a video analysis of the collapse, we can see that the collapse started at a certain location. The first thing we can see is that the all levels collapsed first. And this is an indication that the type of collapse came from the lower level. And then after the center of the building collapsed, it dragged the west building here a little bit and made it tilt slightly. And this tilt in, in structural engineering is called P-delta effect, which generates additional loads to the foundation of this building. And here, because of one, the additional loads generated just by the building that was just collapsed, dragging the top of this building, and also all that structure that went down probably damaged the foundation of this existing building here as well. So the combination of the P-delta effect and the foundation getting weaker here because of the adjacent collapse probably contributed to the collapse of the second building as well, which as we can see was a collapse also coming from the bottom down in a sort of pancake effect. It is known that there were some construction going on on the roof level or it was about to start. Regardless, that construction doesn't appear to be the cause of the collapse because the roof was not the first level that collapsed from what we saw in the video. Another point regarding construction is that apparently there are some other job sites or buildings under construction in the area. And some people may think that because they are drilling foundation piles down for those buildings, it may affect the foundation of the existing buildings, which could have contributed if the foundation is already weakened. But in general, there are several buildings that are constructed very close to each other and provisions are made by structural engineers and geotechnical engineers so that the foundations don't intersect or they don't affect each other in a way that's going to generate a collapse. In light of all of this, the million dollar question is, why did a 40 year building collapse? In building years, 40 years is relatively young as a matter of fact, in Miami-Dade and Broward County here in Florida, when a building turns 40 years old, it needs to go through a recertification process. And then after this 40 year mark, it has to be recertified every 10 years. So this building was about to go through the 40 year recertification period, which is when an engineer is contracted to evaluate the building and do a structural assessment of the building and see if there is anything that needs to be repaired. There are several factors that could have contributed to this collapse. The soil most definitely is a contributor to it. Is it the major contributor? I don't know, but it is known that here in Florida, the soil is not very stiff. An important point in evaluating all of this 
is to analyze what has been done to date on the building, the existing drawings and any sort of inspections that were done to date. And if you go to the city's website, which in this case it's not Miami, it's Surfside, we can actually see that there was an inspection done by our structural engineer back in 2018. And we can see some structural issues with the building, especially at that garage level, which appears to be where the collapse initiated. So here, if we just go to Surfside, Florida, and I'll provide this link in the description below, you can actually download all these files because they are public records. And here we can find out what the 2018 structural field survey report said. And this was done by a structural engineering firm. Here we can even see that they were about to start the 40 year recertification process. And unfortunately, this doesn't seem to have been complete prior to the building collapse. In summary, this is what they found and wrote as the conclusion and recommendations for the report. Abundant cracking and spalling of varying degrees was observed in concrete columns, beams, and walls. And we can see that it says all cracking and spalling located in the parking garage shall be repaired in accordance with the recommendations of ICRI, which is the code for those repairs. Additionally, prior to 2018, it seems that there had been already concrete repairs done to the building, but those repairs were not done properly. And we can see here that this company, the company that prepared the report, is convinced that the previously installed epoxy injection repairs were ineffective in properly repairing the existing cracked and spalled concrete. We can see here the photos of the lines where the repairs were and then how the repairs are ineffective because they look a little bit rusty. Or in other words, they are still allowing water to seep through the concrete and reach the steel that's inside the concrete. And when that steel is finally damaged, that's when the concrete will actually fail. I don't know how much repair was done after 2018. I don't have that information, but I know that concrete is a great structural material because it usually warns us before it actually fails. We see just the concrete columns and the concrete beams, but in reality, there are steel rods, which we call rebars, inside the concrete and those can actually stretch a little bit which the concrete may crack and that steel inside the concrete will still stretch a little bit before it collapses. So it looks like the building had already presented signs of initial failure throughout the years and it just because of multiple factors, the soil settling a little bit year by year, the building being close to the ocean, therefore there's more corrosion, and also just water infiltration through the concrete, getting to the steel, and ultimately generating some sort of failure. I hope you enjoyed this video and are a little bit more informed about how structural engineering works and how buildings in general need to be repaired and be looked at from time to time. When failures like this occur, we all hurt as a community, as structural engineers, as building owners. Our goal as structural engineers is to preserve public safety and life safety and also to raise awareness when we think something is wrong. My goal with this video is not to finger point or blame anyone, but just to raise awareness of what can be done to prevent failures like this. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.